Okay, so I've in only in about six months I've managed to collect a fairly extensive X68000 original game collection. Um, I just like having the box games, and I actually have just about all of the ones that I wanted because they are fairly cheap over here in this country and in this part of the world anyway. Um, but being floppies, they will die eventually, so you need to come up with some alternatives. As well as, you know, there's like Dojin games and stuff on the internet that I'd love to play on my real machine. Um, person, you know, a lot of people will get a big clunky old desktop computer with a five and a quarter inch drive in it and run something like X Floppy. And that is a fairly easy, simple way to do it. But if you've got a, uh, if you don't want to do that like I, like me, Mm, there are other ways. In this demonstration, I'm going to be using a CD-ROM. Um, this is getting into more sort of the advanced kind of stuff you can do with the machine. But, uh, quick demonstration. So, this is just a CDR um, that I've already, that I just burned. I took just a bunch of files that I want to put on my X68000. Like, you know, I've got some Tokodama and Radius 2 MSX version and Darius and some hack patches for some hard drive installs. Um, so these are already burned on the CD. Just to check to you. My laptop is dying. The LCD doesn't even work anymore. Come on, eject. There we go. <laughs> All right. So, and we're just going to throw this into my uh, old Fujitsu SCSI CD-ROM. Uh, you can use essentially any SCSI CD-ROM drive. Mine's SCSI 2 quad speed, but I think quad speed, I'm not exactly sure. But you're still limited by speed anyway, because, you know, like on my XPI here, I, only, I don't have a SCSI 2 card, so I'm just using a SCSI 2 cable with a SCSI 1 adapter. But essentially, you can use pretty much any CD-ROM drive you want for this. Um, of course, first you need to get it set up with, with a driver. The system itself doesn't have built-in support for CD-ROMs. In fact, Sharp themselves never officially supported CD-ROM drives. Uh, but uh, there actually were a few games and a bunch of like disc magazines and a bunch of other stuff were released on CD-ROM, just not by Sharp. But anyway, you need a driver. So I'm using the uh, CD-ROM driver version 2.1 from Basic House. Uh, there's a bunch of different drivers you can use. I really like this one because this one actually supports SX Windows 3.1, which this makes things easier to use because um, I can just drag and drop for the GUI. But uh, I'll get into actually using it in a minute. So first, let me just put the camera on my chair here since tripods fortunately are still legal in this country unless you have a license but getting a license for them is kind of a pain in the ass and uh, I just can't be bothered let me just get the camera zoomed in a bit so let's see so, da, 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 da. yeah it's not the best setup start from there. So anyway, first I'll show you how uh, setting up the driver, once you, obviously you'll need the driver on a floppy disk to get it into the machine itself, but it's really easy. Uh, all you have to do is so um, it's, it's, and it's already installed and run, set up here, so I'll just show you. Is in your, well, so in my case since I'm using SX, I'd be using my SX uh, boot sys folder. So I have my sys folder and this, the driver's right here. This, um, zoom on it. Yeah. CD dead, that's sys. All you do is you just copy this one file to the sys file and then. You simply, and then you need to uh, add it to your 
boot config, so just gonna load up Sharpen here, my text editor, and put this here. It's kind of neat in SX 3.1. It actually runs at a higher resolution than. <laughs> So you can actually scroll the desktop over. If you want, you can disable it, but neat little feature for something so old. Um, and then, yeah, so here's my config file. And all you gotta do is just add just the one line. Yeah, right here, this uh, device equals, and then the sys folder and cddev.sys. So that's right there. So now all we got to do is boot up. Um, currently, I haven't actually turned the drive on yet. Now, being SCSI, you need it needs to initialize the drive when the driver itself loads. So you can't just turn it on and off whenever you want. You got to turn it on. Well, it's well, the drive has to be on before. The driver loads on the computer. So I'm just gonna essentially just turn the drive on. Are you running? Yes, you are. I'm running on the drive on battery currently because I don't have an AC adapter for it yet. But so the drive's on, I'm gonna reboot the computer. There we go. It's to the point where it's actually loading the drivers. There we go. And six three point one. And now if I go up to my drive tray, since the drive was on, we will see. A C D ROM icon. Right there. So now all you gotta do is double click and there we go. This is all the files on the C D that I just made. So, um let's just do something really simple. So like Dari is here, this is a um, a homebrew port of the Darius 3 screen arcade game. Um, it's not, it was never actually finished and it doesn't fully work, but uh, it's tiny, so just for demonstration, so you can see it's copying from the CD to the uh, hard drive right now. All right. Uh, uh, okay, and then da, 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 da. so here I have my directory. And here's all the diverse files now on my hard drive. Um, now as far as actually, so as you can see, it's very easy to just copy tons of shit over to the hard drive. Now as far as actually like running like games and stuff using this way, it's completely dependent on the game. Like a lot of Dojin stuff runs straight out of the directory it's in. So as long as you've got all like the music and sound drivers loaded, it will just straight up function. Um, other games though, you know, you need to load specific drivers. Retail games, um, there's generally two ways. Already, quite a few of them have been hacked to run straight off the hard drive. So you just have to basically copy the directories over. And and, and they usually, and then you can boot them that way. There's a few games like Undead Line that still won't do that way. 
in which case you need to use a program called 2HD Boot. Uh, 2HD Boot allows you to mount virtual floppy drives on the machine, and then you can take the actual x68000 image files that like you'd get off the internet, and then mount them in virtual drives, and then run the game directly. Um, however, the negative to that is since you're using virtual drives, you need a shitload of RAM because you have to load the images into RAM and still have enough RAM to load the game. So to do that, you need, generally speaking, at least six megs of RAM, even more, depending on how big, like if you've got a game that's like four discs, you're probably gonna need close to like, you're gonna need at least eight megs, possibly even more. Uh, I've got the full 12 megs on my, sh on my machine, so for me, it's a convenient setup. But using H2 HD boot is kind of a whole video by itself, so, once I get that all set up and running and I get some experience with it, I'll probably do a video on that. But this video is just CD-ROM file transfer, really. But anyway, uh, Darius here is a very simple, not even really finished game. So just for example, I think this one I can just run straight through SX Windows. So uh, just double-click on the file here. Yeah, and it boots right up. Now, as I said, this version isn't, it was never finished, so as you can see, nothing can actually hit you. You just run through shit, but, uh... The music sounds nice, and, uh, I can shoot things. They can't shoot me. But this was just, you know, an example game. I don't think there's any power-ups either in this version. I bet it was never actually finished. But yeah. So I'll just let that run as I ramble on. Cut the sound though. So, um, again, as far as game-wise go, it depends on the game, but it's fully possible to... So that using a CD-ROM drive, you can basically uh, copy pretty much anything you want very easily um, straight to the hard drive from your computer. And also, since you do get an entire CD, you get a lot of space on there, as opposed to using the 1.2 meg floppy. So, for file transfer, this works really well. And with a little more experience, you can generally get most games running, too. But uh, that's another video. Uh, the, ne the negatives of this system are, one, well, as I said, I'm using SX 3.1, which is a fairly intensive operating system. Um, it requires 4 megs of RAM by itself to even boot, so I don't know if you don't have that, you can't use this version of the OS. And also, of course, you need a hard drive in your machine. And yeah, so that's the main one, is that you need that SX 3.1, at least with the driver I'm using. Again, there are drivers that are command line only and we'll work on simpler look machines that don't have the fancy GUI. But then you've got to, you know, type all your directory names manually, and it takes a bit longer. So if you can do this kind of setup, I find it very convenient. Um, another way that you can do that is similar and lower specs is to use a Mo drive. These Mo drives were never really popular in the U.S., but in Japan, at least, they work very popular for a, about a five-year span. Um, and because of this, the neat thing is the X68000 does have built-in MO drive support in at least human 68K 2.0 and SX 2.0 and later. So if you have an older, so even if in an older version of the operating system, you can typically take a SCSI Mo drive, plug it in, and the system can do use it directly without any, like, you don't have to install any drivers. It has the support already built into it. 
Plus then, though in that case you'll probably need two motor drives, you'll need a SCSI for the computer and a USB one for your laptop. Again here in Japan, motor drives cost virtually nothing. And then you can actually go both ways since you can write to a mo disk and then read it on your computer as opposed to just the one way. But that's just another option. But my CD-ROM drive is just a cheap little uh, Fujitsu drive I found on Yahoo for 20 bucks. Still works and yeah. I can play this one level of Darius that once you reach the end like never even ends. <laughs> but just a demo. So yeah, um definitely a nice setup to have. And assuming you have all the files needed to do it, it's very easy to use.